Hello, welcome back to Refit and Sell. My name is George Isted. I'm the Solent Boat Butler. I run a small business refitting and repairing boats. A lot of those boats tend up being Contessa 32s because of my long experience and history with them. This is the second part of fitting the floor into the boat. So when I say fitting the floor, it's actually fitting the solid wood, the teak and holly effect solid wood that is going on top of the subfloor that was fitted some months ago after a full osmosis treatment and fitting a new water tank. Now, if you haven't seen those videos, I'll put a link up here so um, there'll be a link somewhere to the uh, part one of this video which is about fitting the flooring and if you go into my other videos you'll find the full range of Project Lottie videos going all the way back to right from the start so if you're interested in refitting old boats that might be of interest to you and the good news is my videos now are much much better than my videos a year ago because funnily enough you get better with practice so we shall continue with the story so in the end of the last episode I had got all the solid wood flooring down on the flat bits of the cabin sole so all the way through from the step behind me back there where you walk into the boat the main cabin sole on the step by the mast and through all the way up into the forepeak but I had the tricky problem of doing the side so there's some curved bits of the hull which are much much trickier to fit and that's what I'm just about to come on to now so we will rejoin the story right now. So my plan for those side bits is to lay up a very thin layer of glass so probably just one probably two um, layers of biax or something like that just on a flat surface and then I'm going to bond the pieces of wood the flooring um, for the size down onto that piece of glass to effectively make a sheet that I can then cut out to shape and glue in place in one kind of go. So I think that's going to be easier because the side bits are one they're slightly curved but they're two they're also slightly uneven unlike the floor which is plywood so completely flat and I think that's going to be the best way of doing it and I can just kind of bond that down put some weights on it and then glue that into position. It's going to be quite difficult to do because I've got to flex that um, I'm going to have to make it slightly oversized and flex it whilst it goes in, I think. Um, so it's going to be quite tricky to do because it's going to be, you know, 8mm thick. Um, it should bend because the, the pieces of wood, um, this TMT is kind of flexible to some extent. So it will take the curve, but obviously when you've got multiple pieces all glued together with a glass fibre backing, it's going to be slightly stiffer. But I think that is going to be the best way of doing it and kind of maintain a nice flat surface when you're gluing it onto a surface that isn't flat. I've kind of done a practice piece which doesn't need to bend in the corner. I'll show you what that looks like. So I say practice piece, it's not really, it's just a, a piece that I have trimmed to fit into this little corner here because um, we need to cover up that, we need to cover up that and I've got a similar thing over in the galley. So what I've done is I had a spare off cut and I've trimmed it to size like this and I've put a big chamfer on the edge there and that fits quite nice and neatly up in this corner here. So I'm gonna glue that in place and I think that'll look pretty nice and tidy. Well folks, it is absolutely minging outside. It's wet, it's windy, it's horrible. It's not cold, which is good because I'm about to use some epoxy and I'm hiding in the workshop here. So on this uh, sheet of plastic here, I'm going to be laying up the glass, which is going to be the backer for the wood um, that's going to be going up the sides of the boat. So what I'm going to do is I have waxed this with some mold release wax, but I didn't really need to do that because I'm going to be putting on this a layer of peel ply. So um, that is this stuff. So um, I shall drape a layer on there once I've got a coat of epoxy on it and then lay up the glass on top of that and then put peel ply on top of that again. Why am I doing that? It's because I want the texture that peel ply gives to the laminate I'm laying up. On the top, I'm going to be gluing onto this thin piece of laminate backer the wood, which is going to be going up the sides. So ultimately, I'm going to be sticking this wooden piece of flooring to the side of the boat. So again, I want that texture underneath so I get a really good bond between it and the hull of the boat. So um, that is the plan. Do I need to use epoxy for this? No, in theory, I probably could use polyester. There's no issue with that, but because I've glued all the rest of the pieces of wood down to the floor with epoxy, um, it makes sense to use epoxy for gluing the um, wood to this piece of laminate. So making the laminate out of epoxy as well just means I'm using similar materials all the way through. And epoxy is particularly good for bonding wood better than polyester. So um, that is why I'm 
time going down that route. So I'm going to set up a time lapse, mix up some epoxy, put it on there, get it all done and hope the rain stops so I can go back to the boat and do some work there. There we go, two layers of, I think it was 300 gram, might have been 325 or 350 gram Biax. All laid up, peel ply on both sides. I'm gonna let that set up then, then I can come back later and make another sheet for the longer side. And um, then I can start putting some wood on it, which will be nice. Someone, probably an internet expert is gonna ask me, why didn't you vacuum bag it? Or some other nonsense. Um, because it's a non-structural part, because I know I've got the glass to resin ratio about right. I could see at the end, you probably saw me mix up a tiny bit more resin. That's because I could see it hadn't quite fully filled the weave. And because in reality, in most circumstances, you don't, do not need to vacuum bag your uh, laminations. You tend to do that more in kind of, high-end race boat applications where you really want to minimize weight and get the glass to resin ratio absolutely right. And uh, for this application, it's a backer. That's why I don't vacuum bag a lot. In fact, I very, very infrequently do it because it's just not necessary for most applications. But um, if you want to give it a go, it's quite good fun. Um, anyway, I'm gonna head back to the boatyard and go and do some wiring, I think, which will be possibly the subject of a completely different video. I'm back on the boat now. It's now a few days after the last bit of video. I've now laid up a second sheet of glass fibre with epoxy in the workshop. Whilst I was waiting for that to set up yesterday, I started making some templates for the pieces of floor that I need to make up, and I'll show you those now. Again, it's the tried and tested method of using strips of wood and a hot melt glue gun, but there's the port side, and I've done exactly the same on the starboard side down there. I'm kind of working on the fact that I want kind of 10 to 15 mil overlap onto the flat bit of floor. So that's why there's that purple masking tape down there. Right, I think I'm gonna head off to the workshop with my templates and some wood and start gluing some bits of uh, wood down to the glass fiber sheet. Well, hopefully, as you can see, I have my two sheets of um, glass fiber lay up. I'm having to crouch over it so you can see my face, although maybe you'd prefer it like that. Um, this peel ply here rips off nice and easily, makes a lovely sound to give me a nice surface that I can glue my strips of wood down onto. I've already removed the peel ply off of the sheet underneath here. I also have my templates sitting on the floor back here. So I can swing these around without breaking them because they are a little bit delicate. I'm now going to draw around these, um, oversizing it slightly to be fair, uh, and then uh, cutting around it, uh, cutting out the, the squares and the triangles I also need for some other areas on the boat. And then I can start gluing up bits of wood. In fact, now I'm thinking about it, the square and the triangles that I need, I can probably do that as one piece and then cut them out of a single blank because that'll be slightly more efficient.
there we have all the uh, GRP sheet cut out. Um, in case you're wondering, it is very, very flexible. Which is absolutely perfect because I want it to be flexible. Uh, it's just a backer um, because I do not trust edge gluing these pieces of wood together to make a sheet. It needs something on the back just to give it a bit more um, uh, strength to stop it from kind of all collapsing when I put it into place. But anyway, I've got some bits here. I'm going to glue these up in exactly the same way as I glued them directly to the floor on the boat. Um, cover them with epoxy, smush them down, put some weights on and come back in a few hours, which is perfect because I've got some more work I need to do on the boat. It's the next day and I'm back in the workshop. I've just taken the weights off these bits of flooring and they're looking pretty decent. They obviously need a sand just to get rid of excess glue, um, but I'm pretty pleased with that. I hope the sound's okay. I forgot my microphones, they're back on Lottie, but um, hopefully this sounds okay. The interesting thing will be, is how much flex is in these pieces of flooring. So I need them to be able to bend a bit. I expect they will, but let's give that a look. Oh, well, here is one of the pieces and uh, let's see how it bends. Okay, that is pretty good. I don't know how much you can see that on camera, but there we go. That bends pretty easily. So getting that to conform to the shape I need it should be no great issue at all. Now, before I can take these off to the workshop, I need to start on the next one. So I have another flexi piece of glass and I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing again. So I'm going to cut up some strips of this TMT and start gluing it down. So I find when I'm gluing these down, the sweet spot is really getting about three or possibly four strips of the, the wide planks down at any one go, any more than that. And I'm struggling to hold it all in position and hold them all kind of squidged together. Um, masking tape helps because you can stretch the masking tape and sort of stick it down. That helps kind of compress the pieces together. Um, but doing any more than that's quite tricky. But I'm using a fast hardener on this epoxy so I can glue them down, go off, a couple of hours later, maybe three or four hours later, depends on the temperature, I can come back and then do the next strips. So in theory, I can get this whole thing done today. Um, it's eight o'clock in the morning at the moment, so I'm gonna get the first few strips on and then go do some wiring and then possibly some of this flooring on the boat and then I'll come back later and do the next sort of strips. So this should be ready to trim and fit tomorrow, hopefully. And there we have it. That's the last bits of wood all chopped up and ready to go on to the backer. I'm going to mix up some epoxy, get that glued down exactly the same way as I did before and then leave that to set up. This is the little piece of floor I've just made for the heads area. So I just templated that with some um, some paper actually and then put that on my piece of board and that has been cut out. There is a little gap but that is going to flex in and get glued into position and that will look quite nice. Well, my friends, I have cut out the large piece of flooring that's going to be going in down the starboard side of the boat here. It was pouring with rain yesterday. I really should have cut this out outside, but I ends up doing it inside the boat with a vacuum cleaner and my oscillating tool. Let's see how it looks for a trial fit. Um, I'm expecting it will need some trimming. It needs the bevels put on as I did with the other pieces, um, but let's have a look for an initial fit. It's slightly dangerous doing this for the first time on camera because you never know quite how it's going to look or how bad it's going to fit. <laughs> okay, it's slightly tight on the ends there, so I'm going to have to sand a bit of material off that, I think. But oh no, I can get that in. Okay, that's actually not too bad. It needs to go up a bit. I've got a bit of a gap at the top here at the moment. It looks like I've taken a bit too much off there and not quite enough off there, but I think I can make that work. I've got plenty of material here that I can trim it exactly to size. I'll lift the camera up so you can see. Here we go, that's a better view from where I had the camera. You can see there's a bit of a gap at the top here. It kind of, uh, no, no gap there, but a bit of a gap as we come into the middle. And that gap kind of stays until 
we get all the way up to the end nearly. So I've got a bit of trimming to do, but that's fine. So I think the first thing I'm going to do just to make it easy to get in and out is I'm going to trim these, these very far ends just so that it will slide in easily. I don't mind if there's a very slight gap there because I'm going to be putting a finishing piece on the front of the steps. It will cover any gap, so that's not an issue. Um, so I think that's the first thing to do because getting this out is a bit... Oh, there we go. It's not too bad, but it could be easier. Right, I'm going to take the sander to that and give it a quick buzz. So in a situation like this, I've got an uneven curve that I want to make a, an even flush gap all the way around. And to do that, what I've done is I've found a small piece of plywood, which is about the right uh, size to fit the gap where it's at its widest point. And then what I do is I get my pen and I can put that piece of plywood, that little spacer, where I need to remove material and I can just run along with my pen and just mark on the masking tape here where I need to cut along here. And that works quite well. So if you look closely, you can see there's a little line in here, which when I put my little block of wood up against it, you can see where I have drawn that line on all the way along. So I'm gonna be removing some material from there. I don't need so much off in the middle but as we come back up to this end up here you can see there's a bit more of a line again so I've got kind of two and a half mil of material to remove that side nothing really in the middle and the same deal up that end I'm holding this in place with my feet because it does pretty much fit now there is both bend in this and there's also twist in this so it is going to take some heavy weights to hold it down into place uh, when I actually glue it into position but I think I've got it as good as I really need to get it now in terms of fitting all I need to do now is give it a sand on top because that's just going to be easier whilst it's flat just to remove all those bits of glue um, work out exactly where it's going to go I'm going to put some masking tape around the border of where it's going to be going so I can put it into place and then that can be glued into position. Here are the other two pieces just glued in. So I've done that little corner piece there. In fact, I need to take the tape off so it doesn't get glued on. And that one has some batteries on it at the moment just to hold it down into place, to flex it into place. And that is going to look great once it's glued in. One top tip, to stop your batteries from slipping, you get a piece of sandpaper like that, fold it over so it's grippy effectively on both sides and it stops your battery from slipping down and keeps the weight where you want it. Well folks, as I'm sure I have said to you before, this is not my primary job. I'm not a full-time YouTubist. I don't think I ever will be. My primary job is fixing boats. So I have been getting on with the floor off camera, but I'm gonna give you a quick update of where I've got to and then I'll show you the last piece going in. But before you go, if you like this content, if you like the show, you can support this show by going down into the description below where there is a link to a PayPal account. And if you've learned something or if you've enjoyed this video, you can buy me a beer as a thank you, or you can buy me two or three beers. Um, it's all good. I enjoy beer, I enjoy tea, uh, but I also collect money to go towards better equipment, which allows me to produce better content for you. Now, you don't have to do that. If you don't want to do that, that's absolutely fine, but you could do one more thing for me. Down on the bottom, there is a subscribe button. There is a like button. If you press those two, that is really appreciated. Again, it helps me grow the channel. Right, now let's give you a quick update on what I've done and what we're going to do next. So if we start by going up forward, you can see that little step there's all been sanded and that's because I glued in the little corner that goes in there, but more importantly, I've glued in that piece there. So uh, that was cut to shape and then I used some old batteries just to hold it down because there was both twist and bend in that little bit of um, uh, flooring there. I've got to finish sanding up there. I think the bit in front of the heads is largely done, but the bit between the forward berths is yet to be done. So. This piece here was glued up yesterday. It's quite handy having a few old batteries kicking around. I just help hold things in place when you're doing a job like this. I just have to be careful not to drop them 
because I don't want to damage this new floor. But it's looking pretty, oh, pretty decent. I had tape all the way around it as well, just in case there's any squeeze out so as to um, protect this, because this has had uh, a sand all over it just to remove all the kind of glue residue. Um, and whilst there's the odd spot here, which is just transferred from my hands, that will come off really easily. So if I take these bits of tape off now, that should look pretty nice. The fit is pretty good all the way around. Quite happy with that. It's the fit down here that I was most concerned with getting right because that's the bit that is going to be kind of most visible. The bit at the back here won't be visible much because there's a table that goes in here. So one of the jobs I'm going to do today is to go and find the table leg, which I think might be in my workshop and uh, bring that down and work out where that's got to go. So I'll need the table as well. But there we go. Not too bad. I'm pretty happy with that. That's worked out nicely. So I now need to do the solid which is off camera, which is that long piece you saw me make a short while ago. Once that is glued in, I think that's all the sides done, which is good. Um, there's a tiny bit of flooring at the chart table I'm going to do, uh, which is kind of unconnected to any other bits. Um, but I want to get that side in and then I can get the step fronts done and then everything can be sanded, everything can be varnished. I can put some uh, ring pulls into the uh, hatch lids and then we can call the floor done. <laughs> So I'm waiting for the adhesive to cure on that side. You can see I have brought down a table and more importantly, I have got the table leg out of the workshop. So this thing is the original table leg base. It has been uh, powder coated, so it looks much, much tidier than it was before. And I've just been kind of fiddling with the table to get it aligned centrally using those little um, sticks to um, to get it all kind of lined up centrally in the hole so I can work out where the leg needs to go. Now I think I'm going to just put a couple of holes through here to mark its location and then I can work out what I need to put at the back here just to kind of wedge it in place and make sure it's really secure because it will get kind of leaned against, pushed against and what have you. So it needs to be well bolted down. So if you recall one of the earlier videos under this floor here, under the subfloor, I've got a piece of aluminium that I bonded to the base of the subfloor so I can drill and tap into that. The adhesive used for that side bit has now sufficiently cured that I've been able to remove the batteries that were kind of holding it in place. And my attention has turned to making up the fronts of these steps which is going to be made out of exactly the same wood as the um, Teak and Holly effect top so it's TMT again and uh, got to start by using the old trusted and tried method of templating so bits of thin plywood stuck together with a hot melt glue gun so I can take the shape off of the front of, of this thing and I've been able to transfer it over I'll remove that over onto the sheet of 8 mil, I think um, wood that's going to go on there. So I'm going to cut around that and then trim it to um, be a really nice fit, hopefully. Out the back there, you can see I've done exactly the same thing again. So uh, just made a little template 
and I've drawn around that onto a suitable piece of wood and uh, that will get cut out next as well. So I've got to do that obviously in two pieces because there's a bit of step there and a bit of step there. So I'm going to do the back first. Once that's glued up, I will template the side bit and then she's all done. And there we go. There's that step front cut out and I had to give it just a little bit of a tickle with some sandpaper just to get it to be a really nice fit, but pretty happy with that. That is ready to be glued in. It's just going to get glued in with some thickened epoxy just like the rest of the floor. Same deal at the back. There we go. There's the back step. First piece of it anyway, so that can go in. It's about three or four mil proud at the top, but once that's glued on I can come back in probably tomorrow now and uh, just trim that and then do the other piece there. So just as I did with the, the flooring, this has been partially sanded, but I just want to give this a good rough up. So using a bit of 80 grit here, just to knock off any kind of high bits that might be on there, but also to give it a bit of a texture, a bit of roughness for the epoxy adhesive to uh, adhere to. Same deal on the back here, I might just go across the grain and just to rough it up a little bit. It's less critical with the wood to be honest with you. I mean I know that's wood but it's epoxy coated wood whereas this is um, untreated. And I will paint the back of this with unthickened epoxy because it absorbs in slightly and that gives you a slightly stronger bond. Not that there's going to be a great deal of load on this. All right, I'm going to give that a quick hover and a quick wipe down with acetone and I will mix up some epoxy. Now the next day, in fact it's Saturday morning, which uh, means I shouldn't be working, but I am doing a few little hours just to get ahead. I have removed the batteries that were in front of here, and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. So without my face in the way, you can see this is glued up, very minimal gap there. I've trimmed this so that the um, uh, floorboard will come out quite easily, and I have just cut and trimmed this piece here, which is a somewhat snug fit and I can't get it out with one hand um, but I'm going to glue that piece in uh, there just to finish off the step front but before I glue this piece in here I'm worried I'm going to catch this as I walk in and out of the boat so I'm just going to run along the top here with my flush cut um, bit in the router or router depending on how you want to call it. I'm going to do the same on the step at the front as well so here's the front step it's just got about kind of six eight mil on the top there, kind of quarter of inch, maybe just a smidge over quarter of inch if you are uh, imperially inclined, is that the right word? Um, so let's give that a trim and then I can glue the last piece in and then go do something else. 
So it just occurred to me that you may not know what a flush cut root bit looks like. It's one of these, so uh, it has a little um, bearing on the bottom there that rides up against whatever it is that you want to flush cut to, and then obviously this bit here spins around and uh, cuts off the excess material that you're trying to get rid of. And I use this in my little palm-sized um, router, and uh, this is really nice because it's light, it's pretty powerful, it does about 99% of the work that I need to do. I do have a bigger one as well, but um, nine times out of 10, I use this chap just because it's small, light, easy to handle, very powerful. Made by Bosch, not sponsored by them, but uh, it's a nice piece of kit. It works well. It's the blue Bosch, so it's the professional range, not the green Bosch stuff. Um, but um, yeah, if you want one of these, these are really good. Maybe I should put a link in the description, one of those affiliate links. I know um, lots of YouTubists do that sort of thing, and it makes them uh, a couple of pence extra whenever you buy one. So yes, I will do that. I'm going to try and set up an affiliate link in the description for this router. And if you go and buy one using that link, I think I might earn like a few pennies or something, um, which helps fund the channel. But I've just got to change the bit, so I've got to hold that little red button in there, which locks the spindle. There we go. Spanner on there. Slide that one out. Slide this one back in. And do a backup. Now, I just need to adjust the depth of cut for what I want. So this base plate moves up and down like so. And uh, what I can do is just hold it against the workpiece and roughly work out how deep it needs to cut. As you can see, the only problem with using a flush cut router bit or any router is when you're removing lots of material, it sends it absolutely everywhere. So time for a hoover up. Now I've had a hoover up, but the one thing I can't do with the little flush cut router bit is to get right into the corners. I'll show you what I mean. So down here, you'll see I could get in as kind of far as there couldn't get any further because of the, the size of the router. So what I do is I can cut that off with this chap here. So this is a um, pull saw, but um, the important thing about this saw is the little teeth do not splay outwards. They are completely flush. So what you can do is you can come in. It's actually designed for cutting off um, plugs for um, when you're when you're plugging a piece of wood. So you've got a bunch of screws in there and then you um, put 10 or 12 or whatever mil um, plugs in. And then you can flush cut those plugs using this saw. And because the teeth don't stick out, you can rub it against the surface and it doesn't damage it. So I can come in and carefully cut this extra bit off. Now it does take a little while because it has very fine teeth. But if I'm careful, I can just slowly work my way out to the edge and trim this piece off. Well, it is now Monday morning. I'm back on it. I had to stop rather suddenly and urgently on Saturday, unfortunately, because I managed to cut my hand rather unpleasantly, but I will spare you the slightly gory pictures and details, but um, that is just the way it goes sometimes. I was tired, I was distracted, and um, this saw, which is very sharp, um, got slightly bloodied. That's all I'll say. Anyway, um, I can get back on with it now. It's all held together. Um, what I was doing when I was uh, cutting that um, piece of wood, uh, this piece of wood and my hand, was just trimming this. So I made a small piece of trim, you can see this, on Saturday morning because up in the bow I just needed to have a finishing piece. So let me show you where this is going to go. 
up here in the bow, you can see just where that piece of flooring finishes. You can see all the end grain there, and I just don't think that finishes it off particularly nicely, so I'm just going to be putting that corner piece over the edge there just to kind of finish it off. Once I've done that, I've got to finish trimming around here, so that is the last bit of step front that I glued in on Saturday. I've just taken the battery away that was holding it in place, so the top of that needs trimming, and then that can all just be sanded all flush just to finish it off, and I've just got one tiny last little bit of floor to finish off in here, so the owner asked if I could put that kind of teak and holly effect floor in just on that little piece there, which is underneath the chart table, which kind of makes sense. It ties the whole thing together. So I've done the bottom bit. I'm just going to start laying some bits of wood and cutting them to shape up that kind of side bit. And then she's all done. Now it has to be said, this has been a bit of a marathon getting this floor in place, but um, I'm really, really pleased with the result. It's looking superb. And, um, you know, a lot of hours have gone into it, but I think it really makes and finishes the cabin in here because it just looks superb and it's going to look even better once it's all varnished and it's all sealed. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to crack on and get some work done, finish trimming this thing here without putting the saw through my hand and uh, glue it on and then crack on with the rest of the works. Well, that's the bit of floor in the chart table area done, and that means every bit of floor that needs to be stuck down on this boat is now stuck down, which is a big milestone, I'm very pleased to say. I'm going to next give everything a bit of a sand, so I have done some sanding through the boat of the floor as and when I've had some time. And I've been able to do it without disturbing anything that is still gluing, so I'm going to finish off now doing a bit of sanding, and then it can be varnished. Well, we are now at the very exciting stage of having had everything sanding and it's got to the stage where I've had to take my shoes off coming in here because it's quite wet outside and I don't want to be dragging wet in onto the dry wood that is going to get varnished today. So the last thing I'm going to do is, because it's all been buzzed over with 80 grit, it's a little bit coarse and it does leave little swirl marks um, with that um, coarseness of paper. So I'm just going to go through and hand sand at 240 all over. It's not going to take very long just to get rid of any remaining swirl marks in the wood because this first coat of varnish will show up all the imperfections and I don't want those. So I'm going to go over with a bit of 240 over the entire floor, have yet another hoover up. I've done an awful lot of tidying, cleaning and a lot of hoovering just to get dust out of the boat as much as possible. It's not super critical in these early stages of varnishing, but the less dust you can get into the varnish, the better. Um, I'm not going to show you all the varnishing, but I am going to have that sand. I'm going to get that first coat on and then I'm going to show you what it looks like. So what varnish am I going to be using on the floor? Well, there's so many different options. It's not worth going into all of them. Everyone has their own favourite, but what I find works really well and what I've used on here and will continue to use here and on the floor is I put my first two or three coats on just using Epiphanes. Oh, sorry, the light's catching it. Epiphanes, um, sort of classic kind of gloss varnish and uh, they call it... Um, uh, uh, extra UV filter clear gloss varnish. Um, so that goes on because it gives a nice bit of um, film thickness quite quickly and it builds up um, the amount of protection you want to get onto the floor, makes it nice and waterproof. On top of that, because I'm not very keen on the gloss effect, um, and this will get the same, uh, it's gonna get Epiphane's rubbed effect on there as well. I don't know if you can see that, there we go. Um, so the rubbed effect is um, kind of a satin, finish and it looks really nice. You still see all the grain of the wood and what have you, but you just don't get this really shiny finish, which I'm not so keen on. So everything in here is going to end up getting the rubbed effect apart from some areas of trim, like around the door and things like that. I'm going to do in gloss just because it kind of picks it out and it makes it look nice, but that is probably going to be the subject of another video when I get all the varnishing finished off in here. Because at the moment, all this has just had two coats of the gloss just to get everything sealed after it was all stripped and sanded and everything and prepped. So um, I'm leaving all the final varnishing to the very last stages of this project. And here is the floor after that first thinned coat of varnish. It's not particularly shiny because the wood has soaked up the varnish a fair amount, but um, you can kind of get the effect of what it's going to look like. I'm walking around with just my socks on because I don't want to damage anything, and uh, it's still ever so slightly soft, but I'm going to stick a second coat on in the not too distant future. I did put a time lapse on, but for some reason my time lapse settings were so um, quick 
there's just a few seconds of footage for me when I was varnishing the floor. I just applied it with a roller and then used a brush just in the corners. So I'm just trying to get the material on again. There's the hatches that uh, will go back into the holes in the floor. And uh, a bit later on today, I'm gonna to put a second coat on, but I'm gonna have another hoover up and I might give it a very, very light sand with some 400 grit just to knock off any high spots, remove any bits of fluff and dirt and dust. Uh, and then get that second ceiling coat of varnish on. But you can see it really isn't shiny at all because it's all kind of soaked into the new wood. But I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. It is slightly darker than it was previously when it was bare wood, but I think that with time it will lighten uh, a little bit. So, um, and there's gonna be lots of lighting in here as well. We're putting lots of lights in. So I don't think the darkness of the floor is going to cause any major issues or concerns, I think it looks pretty good. Folks, Monday morning has rolled around again very rapidly. I've had three days off, but which has been perfect because this has had three days of me not trying to do anything in here. And so it's been able to harden really nicely. I can sit on this, it's not tacky anymore. That's the only thing about using a traditional varnish. It does take a little while for it to cure to the point where it's not um, tacky. Uh, so three coats deep. Uh, first coat, very, very thinned. Uh, second coat, uh, still thinned or reduced if you're an American. Uh, third coat, just thinned or reduced enough just to make it flow out nicely. Between each coat, it had a good rub down, particularly between the second and the third coat. There is quite a lot of dust in here. I did my best to have a really good hoover up. There's still quite a lot of dust in here. So um, some of that dust was landing back on the floor. Um, hairs as well, I had to... I had to put trousers on, can you believe it? It's probably the first time on YouTube I've been wearing trousers um, to try and contain my leg hairs and stop them all falling in the um, varnish. <laughs> Sorry, a bit too much information there, perhaps. Um, I've got a few things I want to get done today just to finish off this floor um, before it gets its final coats of the satin finish, the, the rubbed effect finish from Epiphanes. Um, but I'm probably gonna leave it a good week or two for this to really, really cure well. Um, plus I've got some other work to do in here and then it will get a final rub down and then probably two coats of the rubbed effect um, varnish on the floor just to finish it off. But um, before I do that, I need to fit some ring pulls in these and I want to fit the table leg in there. But I'm gonna give you a quick look at the floor first before we get onto those jobs. Here we go, there's a better view of the floor with its three coats on and going forward. It's all looking nice and shiny. Uh, now, not everyone likes the shiny finish. I kind of do, and I kind of don't. Um, it does look lovely when it's all fresh and new, but I do find that one, it can be slippery underfoot. Uh, and secondly, too much gloss, I think, inside a boat can, uh, doesn't know, it doesn't make it feel very warm. So that's why we're gonna be going for the rubbed effect or the, the satin varnish ultimately on most of the interior. But it has to be said, it is looking pretty spectacular. I'm really, really very pleased with it. Now I can't remember what I've shown you before whilst I've been filming, but this is the original table leg that came out of the boat. Uh, it's been sent off, I've had it powder coated um, because it was looking pretty grim, to be honest with you. It is 50 years old. So come back from powder coaters, looks much, much smarter. Um, it's a little bit dirty on the top there, so that's why it looks a bit speckly. Um, and it is going to be fitted to the floor under my knee. So I'm gonna have to scroll down. You won't be able to see my face, but I'll show you what I'm doing. So down here, you can probably just about see there's two little holes that I pre-drilled because um, earlier in this, in fact, I must have filmed it because I think I talked about it. So earlier in this video, I worked out where this table needs to go in terms of getting the table spaced correctly in the gap here. And there is some aluminium bonded to the underside of the subfloor. I think it's six or eight mil aluminium that I had kicking around. So now this has all been varnished. I'm gonna come in, uh, I've already pre-drilled that, but I need to drill it out slightly larger. And then I'm gonna tap those holes in the aluminium to take this chap here, but you will see that there is a gap back here. So that needs filling with something because obviously it's gonna want to do that. So the plan is because that isn't going to get seen at all, unless you really, really want to have a look, 
I'm going to bolt this down initially and get it fixed. Uh, and then I'm going to see what bits of wood I can um, put in there. I might be able to get some of this leftover um, uh, maple and put some in there. But actually, I'm going to fill that with thickened epoxy uh, just because it just needs to be filled with something so that when this table gets kind of shoved against, it's not shoving against, shoving against um, you know, thin air. It's going to be pushing against something hard. I can then drill through all the way through to the outside of the boat and the fixings will come from the outside in, put some nice dome nuts on there, and jobs are good. Now I intend to use M8 fixings on this, so to tap an M8 hole you need a 6.8 millimeter drill, which is what I have in here. As I said, I've already kind of pre-drilled these to, I think, 5 mil. I can't 100% remember just because I wanted to have the, the locations sorted, um, but I'm just going to go through now with the 6.8 until There we go, I just felt it go through then. I'm going a little bit fast for metal, but I'll slow it down now. There we go. All right, I'm gonna hoover up that swarf before it goes and damages my floor, and then I can come in with the tap. Now with that cleaned up, I can come in with my tap. There's a very slightly rusty tap in the end of the holder. And uh, I'm just going to cut the thread into the aluminium. Now, this isn't the newest tap in the world, but it is cutting into aluminium, which is pretty soft. So this should be nice and easy. Obviously, I'm currently cutting a thread into the wood, <laughs> which probably isn't going to hold very much. But I'm just going to push down and it will pick up the aluminium in a bit and start cutting my thread. I've just unscrewed this off of here because I want to get all this ready to glue down. So my plan is, um, you can see I've run some masking tape around there just to uh, protect the flooring when I put this on because I don't want any goop to squeeze out. But I've got a couple of bits of wood here, I'm going to chuck them in and then on top of that I'm going to use just some polyester um, filler, a sort of semi-structural filler that I use, which is just um, polyester resin, which has been thickened up and it's got some glass strands in it. I use it a lot for all sorts of gluing, filling and what have you uh, jobs. And it's gonna be perfect for this. It's not going to stick particularly well to this and it shouldn't stick particularly well to the varnish surface, which is exactly what I want because at some point it may be necessary to remove this and if I was to use something like epoxy and uh, roughened up all these surfaces and everything like that I could bond this really really well to the floor but you might want to take it off in the future so all I'm doing is I'm making a spacer between this and that just so that it has something when I do the fixings up it has something to compress against so uh, that's all been masked up I'm going to mix up some goop I've got some fixings, <coughs> M840s. Uh, These are just about the right size to go into those, go through the aluminium and go no further. So that is perfect. So without further ado, <coughs> I'm gonna cough because I've just eaten a biscuit and it's gone down the wrong way and uh, mix up some goop. This table leg's now nicely fixed in place. It's obviously into the tapped aluminium that I mentioned earlier through there. It's not going anywhere, but I still need to do something with these two fixings. I think I mentioned earlier, these two fixings 
somewhat unusually and maybe controversially um, go all the way through the hull to the outside of the boat and then what we do from the outside is put a uh, countersunk head machine screw through from the outside that gets buried in the hull uh, and then put a couple of nuts on the inside just to secure it. That is the way these boats were originally built. Um, effectively, it's the same way that all the Blake's Seacocks are fitted on this boat. So if you think about it from that point of view, it's a perfectly normal thing to do. But um, for many people, when they find out their table leg is held in place by fixings that go all the way through the hull, they go, oh God, that doesn't sound right. But um, as I said, no different to the Seacocks um, if you've got Blake's Seacocks, so uh, same deal. So I'm gonna um, get an eight mil drill bang a couple of holes through the hull, which I really hate doing, I really dislike. Doesn't matter how many times I do it, I hate drilling holes all the way through the hull, but um, it's a necessary evil if you do what I do. Um, so I'm gonna bang a couple of holes through from the outside, use a countersink bit to make a nice big recess for the um, fixing to go into. Once it's all tightened up, skim a epoxy filler on the outside, that will sand and uh, fill and fare that, and then on top of that I'm gonna put a coat or two of the Hempel High Protect Epoxy Barrier Coat that the whole of the hull has had as part of the osmosis treatment and putting a barrier coat on there. So it's gonna be completely sealed. These stainless fittings will not see seawater, so we don't have to worry about crevice corrosion. Uh, and then, table leg done. Now, I'm gonna go through with a five mil first. Um, I've already actually stuck an eight mil in there and just given it a quick whiz just to get a center point. But I'm gonna go through with a five mil all the way through and then open it up with an eight mil or maybe an eight and a half afterwards um, just because uh, I can uh, minimize the damage on the outside of the boat if I go with a smaller drill to start with. Here are the fixings now through the hull from the outside. I've pulled them up as hard as I can. They're obviously way too long and the plan is to use dome nuts like these. I'll try and get it to focus um, because we don't want anyone catching their toes on any kind of ugly sharp ends of bolts or machine screws as these are. Um, so I'm just gonna mark where it comes through the hull and then take these out and then I'll add on about 10 mil Oh, almost lost it there, it's trying to fall out. Uh, add on 10 mil to what I've got here, because I'm pretty sure that, I'm gonna test it in a minute, I'm pretty sure these take about 12 mil of thread inside, so I don't want them bottoming out inside, so 10 mil of thread, plus uh, a bit for the washer, and uh, we're good as gold. Time to get a slitting disc in my angle grinder and chop these off. Well, I've just come round to the workshop now with the boards, the floorboards, which are removable because I need to fit in them the lifting eyes. Now, I think I mentioned earlier in the video that I went up to the chandlery that's on site where I am to go and have a look at the lifting eyes, um, these things. And frankly, the ones that were in the chandlery were, I don't want to say cheap and nasty because they weren't cheap. They were sort of moderately expensive and not particularly good. Uh, and with such a beautiful floor, I just didn't want to fit cheap, nasty fittings. I knew that you could get really nice ones. I've seen these around before. Um, in fact, I think these were the ones on the floor in my old boat. And um, they're just really nicely made. They don't rock around. That bit there is spring loaded. They're nice and shiny. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be doing. So the plan is to work out the center point on all these uh, boards and then use my uh, router, my little palm size router, which you have probably seen me use, uh, and come in and remove just enough material. So I'll stick that on there, draw around it, and then remove material using my little palm size router. Once I've removed enough material just for the edge, because I'm gonna have to remove maybe, you know, one and a quarter mil, something like that, I'll measure it in a minute. I can then come in and remove the extra material I need to remove for the bumpy bit that you can see kind of sticking out there. So that is less critical because what I want is a nice flush fit for this to go in. So 
So what you just saw me doing there was setting the depth of cut on my little router. So it needed to be about 1.8 millimeters. So um, I measured it with my um, little uh, digi caliper here. And I've done a couple of test cuts into a spare bit of the same planking that is on this, um, just because all woods rebound very slightly differently. So if you go for a soft wood, um, it cuts slightly differently to a much harder wood like this. So I wanted to do a test piece in the actual wood that's gonna be cutting into. And I've now got, if I take my little uh, catch, I can put that in the little slot that I've made there and I can run my thumb over it and I can feel that it is just about at the right level. And I've double checked it using my digicaliper as well by sticking the end in there and measuring the depth of cut. As much as I don't like making dust in here, it's also warm in here. So I think I'm going to carefully make some more dust and trim this first one. I'm just gonna do it by hand, follow around, just cut inside the circle all the way around very carefully. Uh, and then I can do a deeper cut for the middle bits. Right, well, I've learned a bit from the first one, which wasn't as accurately cut as I would like. So I've cut away very carefully the circle so that I can hopefully this time come up to the edge and it will be obvious when I've got to stop just to get this cut correctly. truth that is a much nicer fit should have done that the first time that'll do well as you can see i have created a tremendous amount of mess in my clean room um but i could sit on a seat and do it so i'm just gonna have a good hoover up but the important thing is i've got all these nice catches to fit flush so let me just scroll down and uh if I bring the camera in a little bit, you can see we have a nice flush fitting catch here. So I'll take these bits of tape off now. Um, and uh, they are all now ready to fit. As I have a monumental amount of hoovering up to do to um, clean the clean room. Back on the boat now, and there are those floor catches in place. That's the one on step. There's the next one, there's the third one, there's obviously one up in the bow as well. Sorry about the reflection, I need to do something about this glossy varnish, but they've turned out really nice. Well folks, that is the table leg now fully in place. I've bolted it down, I have my assistant from the outside hold the screwdriver whilst I nipped it all up on the inside with sealant and all that's left for me to do is give it a quick skim of filler, sand fill fair, a bit of... Uh, barrier coat over the top and then she's all done. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. This is obviously the second part of fitting the Teak and Holly Effect flooring. If you want to see the first part, I'll put the link up there again if I can remember to do it in the edit. Uh, thank you very, very much for watching. Also, a very many thanks to the supporters of the show that buy me a beer. Sometimes they buy me two, three or four beers uh, using the link that is down in the description. If you haven't already done so, you can hit the like and the subscribe button down below as well because that really helps me grow the channel. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.